to Karen Crespo today. She is a licensed nurse, working as a nurse, having the time of her life, mm -hmm. traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw some of the pictures earlier. You're going to see a lot more uh, right about now. But at the same time, one day in December, uh, her life changed. Um, Karen, w when you were talking to us earlier, you mm -hmm. talked to us about the symptoms, what happened. Right. And then we stopped at where you couldn't even um, tie your shoelaces oh. because your neck was so stiff Correct. and that's when it occurred to you being a healthcare practitioner mm -hmm. that it could be meningitis. Yes. Right. At that point how sure were you? Uh, well I was pretty sure because they emphasize it so much in nursing school meningitis stiff neck you know and uh, how scared were you when it came to you? Oh I was terrified I mean you know you never think you could be sick you know, you always think you're Superman, Superwoman, and nothing can happen to you. Especially when you're in your 20s, exactly. you're beautiful, mm -hmm. you're a working professional, mm -hmm. earning a good living, right. traveling all over the world, mm -hmm. having the time of your life, like I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. What kind of illness, how serious mm -hmm. is meningitis? Well, meningitis is very serious. Not a lot of people know about it. There's two types of meningitis. You could either get it uh, a bacterial or a viral and a lot of people think viral is more severe mm -hmm. but the bacteria one is actually more severe um, even though you can uh, it, you can be cured by antibiotics it's still the bacterial one is the one that causes amputations mm -hmm. the gangrene mm -hmm. um, a lot of the and that's body what organs you got. correct I got the worst kind it's called actually a uh, meningococcal uh, meningitis or called meningococcemia. Um, another word for it, actually a simple word that everyone should remember, it's a, bat, um, a blood infection. Blood infection. Yeah. So it went into the blood. Correct. And it caused you to lose all your limbs. Mm -hmm, correct. Yeah. To lose your nose. Correct. Uh, part of my ear, uh -huh. my right ear, but it grew back over time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I lost that. I, you know, some of my cheeks, and they have skin grafts. I have skin grafts all over my body, mm -hmm. all over my back. Pretty much what you see on my chest and my face is the best skin I have. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's, you know, just skin grafts all over. So when your mom picked you up, cause, because you weren't feeling so well, Correct. and you went to tie your shoelaces and mm -hmm. you thought that, wow, mm -hmm. I have something serious, right. as serious as meningitis, mm -hmm. did you tell her right away? Um, no, because I wasn't sure. I just said, mom. you didn't want to yes, alert her. Yeah. Exactly. You don't want to scare your mom, so I didn't tell her right away. But obviously, she knew something was wrong because I crawled to her car. At that point, because my legs were so numb, well, put it this way, I lived on the ninth floor, uh -huh. and I have an elevator. It took me 30 minutes to get downstairs with the elevator, and my door wasn't far from the elevator. It's because my legs, I couldn't feel it. It looked like I was drunk. My neighbor even passed by, you know, Hollywood, a young person. Right. He's like, hey, you drunk? Are you okay? And I said I was fine. I just said I was fine, even right. though I was scared to yeah, death. Right. right. So I went down the elevator. My mom still wasn't there. I waited in the uh, lobby of our apartments, and once she was there, I realized I couldn't walk, so I crawled from my lobby up to the sidewalk to the street. How quickly mm -hmm. did your life change after that trip to the ER? Did, yep. you, did you get admitted right there and then? Did you? Correct. Okay. Right. Um, once we got to the hospital, I knew I couldn't walk at all. I couldn't even crawl. So I had to tell my mom, get out of the car, get the nurse, and tell them I need a wheelchair. So two nurses came. Um, they took me to the triage room. They took my blood pressure. They couldn't even get my blood pressure because it was so low. But he knew, he saw my heart was beating, he said, in the 130s, 140s. I thought it was faster. And I was breathing rapidly. So he took me right away, no questions asked. Mm -hmm. um, and then right there, the doctors came. I knew something was wrong because they were covering, their, they were gowning up and they were wearing masks. So I thought I had some kind of respiratory infection. They kept on asking me, did you travel out of the country recently? Um, you know, did you... Because how do you get meningitis? Well, meningitis is spread by saliva. You know, um, so you could either get it by kissing, sharing food or drinks with someone. Um, when Who's people, infected? Yes, a lot of people are carriers. Okay. Um, I forgot the percentage, but a lot of people are carriers. I believe it's about 10% of the population, actually. Okay. According that to many. Yes. But not everybody gets the full blown. Correct. You well, could be a carrier but not have symptoms, so you're asymptomatic. Um, you could be a carrier and not know it. Mm -hmm. And if I uh, were, was hanging around with you for a long time, or we shared a drink, mm -hmm. and my immune system was low, mm -hmm. I could have caught it from you, even though we were friends for 10 years. 
nice and right. yes so, so um, the limbs everything what first came to your mind mm -hmm. when it was finally how did you take the news from a doctor that you know mm -hmm. this is meningitis right well I was in a coma for 15 days and after my coma I couldn't speak because I had a tracheostomy in my uh, throat that's why I see right that's why I have a hole yeah, yeah. Um, so because of that I couldn't speak so I didn't know what was going on and when I woke up from my coma all I could move was my head was it an induced coma it was like, a medical right induced when coma. they got when they took you to the hospital Correct. that's it. okay yes. right. 15 days later right I woke up your head. yeah I woke up Christmas okay. Eve and I couldn't move Christmas my head Eve. yes Christmas Eve. it was a blessing because I woke up and they didn't think I was gonna make it okay um, so when when I woke up, I everything was bandages, all my extremities, so I couldn't see anything. Okay. Um, could you feel? Could you I couldn't. Feel it? I couldn't even feel anything. I couldn't even. I tried to raise it up so hot, so bad, because I thought I was paralyzed and no one was saying anything to okay. me. So I tried to raise it up so bad, I couldn't feel my legs. I couldn't. I could barely move my right arm. My right arm was probably the strongest. Okay. Um, and then when the nurses did their dressing change, they did it twice a day. The first time I was awake, they took off the bandage, and my extremities were gangrene very black as black as your blouse everywhere yes. the everywhere. arms from the shoulder down yes and uh, then about the, half midway okay and the legs too and the legs way because yeah because the blood clots correct correct the due to the bacteria the bacteria causes uh, blood clots and because your um, the rest of your body is not getting circulation it causes it to get gangrene and pretty much um, die Useless. yes correct it was heavy it was like a, it was dead weight. So this was Christmas Eve when you woke up mm -hmm. and you noticed everything was, they, and then they took away, they started amputating? Uh, actually, we didn't amputate right away because there was a point where my blood was very thin. Okay. And because it was very thin, they couldn't operate on me because I could bleed to death. Okay. There was high chances I could bleed to death, so we didn't do anything. Okay. And uh, finally, a few days, I want to say right before um, New Year's, I was getting better. I was on dialysis and I ended up producing my own urine. So even kidney? Yes, everything. Oh, everything every failed. single organ, correct. Okay. My breathing, everything. If you're just joining us, we're talking about meningitis and how serious this disease is. And she, Karen, mm -hmm. Karen I guess, didn't think that it could happen to her. You don't think that it could happen to you, but it could. And uh, the good thing is, Karen is here sharing her story despite her sufferings so that you can do something about it. And that's when we return on the show. Don't go away. Mm -hmm.